King Williams, thank you for making time for us here at the ABC. You're, you're the new boss. It's always good to hear from you. Uh, the moment that your announcement uh, of the new job has been, has been made, the ABC is, a, is an institution that provokes a lot of public debate, a lot of public scrutiny, perhaps more so than some of the other organisations you've led in recent times. How does that sit with you? How does that frame your approach to the job? Well, I think I've had um, constant public scrutiny in most of the organisations that, um, that I've run. I was the CEO of the Australian Film Commission back in the 1980s, and it was certainly um, the subject of very regular scrutiny, both in this building in Parliament House and externally in a variety of media environments as we re shaped and, and reset all of the basis of film and television production incentives in Australia. Um, at the Film Finance Corporation, which was an outcome from that, there was a lot of scrutiny. Um, the scrutiny at, um, at Fox Studios, setting up a film studio in the centre of the eastern suburbs of Sydney, was a matter of apparently um, dire consequence for the good citizens of the eastern suburbs. Um, and received a huge amount of media scrutiny, including, I think, one of the largest quack campaigns the Sydney Morning Herald has ever run. So I, I'm not averse to scrutiny. And in fact, I think scrutiny is part and parcel of things that matter. And the ABC is an enormously important national institution to the sense of togetherness in Australia. And it is a, a, a mechanism for Australians talking with each other and talking about their nation. Um, and examining their nation and interrogating the directions of the nation. It has a charter which is unique in the Australian legislative landscape um, and I think the corollary to that is scrutiny because the, the ABC properly run, properly managed is in fact a creature of this parliament and if you're a creature of the parliament you better stand up to scrutiny because it's a public institution and it's accountable to the public. Do you think in some of the discussion around the ABC, scrutiny verges into something else? It verges into, you know, vexatious complaints or, or things like that? Look, I think in, in any media environment, one encounters a certain degree of, of, um, of vexatious um, representation um, that comes with, with news in particular, where clearly often emotions can be very, very um, volatile. It is important that the ABC at all times maintains a balanced and sober response to that sort of scrutiny and defends its position in a way that is not grandiloquent but is in fact calm, measured and authoritative. Um, it doesn't particularly bother me that sometimes people can be fairly um, extreme in their expression of things about things that they care about. What is important is that the ABC is professionally measured in response. Do you think the ABC has been measured in its response to some of the recent criticism it's been receiving, such as with regards to its, its coverage of the Israel-Gaza war? Matt, I, I'm, not, I'm not yet the chair of the ABC. That won't happen. You are, you are public, uh, that, a that, public that, consumer, though. I guess you've been that, sitting that there at home not, watching, that reading, that listening to the That will not happen until March, and I think it's best that I take uh, extensive soundings with the workforce of the ABC, with my colleagues on the ABC board, and obviously with the editorial and, and general um, leadership um, group at the, um, at the ABC before I, I venture into the, um, the various potholes um, with, um, with dealing with responses to current news and current affairs coverage. Taking some of those soundings, you'd, you'd clearly be aware of some of the disquiet within the organisation at the moment. It was uh, only earlier this week that a no-confidence motion was passed by some union members, uh, 125 to 3, uh, against the current managing director, David Anderson. Given that sentiment is, is strong within the ABC workforce, how do you, when you're getting those soundings from staff, how do you seek to address those sort of morale concerns or those concerns about editorial direction? Look, I, I think the best response in, in all matters of, of morale which reflect um, intense um, opinion and, and, and feeling about directions uh, editorially is to listen and to encourage 
um, discussion where there is no sense of punitive response, but there is an a, a, a sense of genuine managed engagement. Um, and my response is to say I'm eager to listen. Is it a, a difficult task considering how emotive this current conflict is in terms of the, the plethora of issues that a journalist is asked to cover? This has inspired a response like few other stories or issues currently before Look, in, in all matters of editorial it is imperative that the ABC reliably adheres to principles of integrity independence and a continuous aspiration to the extent possible in human affairs for freedom from bias it is fundamental to the charter and the remit of the ABC that it reliably adheres to those three principles um, I see no reason um, in terms of the current um, discussions that are taking place to veer, to, to veer away from those three guiding principles. You've had a long career in the media. You've had a long career picking up the phone call to angry people of varying levels of influence. I've fielded many, many hundreds of angry phone calls in a long career. Probably within and outside of the organisations yes. you run. Does it trouble you when you see reports of the influence from lobby groups or interest groups with an issue like the Israel-Gaza war, lawyers Look, writing there, there, petitions... There will, always, there will always be groups that are committed to advocacy trying to influence the direction and the way in which uh, matters are covered in an organisation with the editorial reach of the ABC. What matters is the way in which the ABC responds to it. So what's your general approach if you were receiving a cascade or cavalcade, deluge even, of correspondence To adhere outside. to the principles of integrity and independence and to always um, advocate for uh, a, a course that is free from bias. Now, bias is often in the, in the eyes of a beholder. Um, one needs to obviously have a framework that gives some intelligent sense to that sense of of, of a, a bias-free approach. Has there been a bias in our reporting so far on this issue? Look, I'm, I'm not going to comment on current ed editorial directions and, and, and editorial content. I think it's highly inappropriate that I do that. Um, the ABC board had a meeting yesterday. They, they have endorsed um, the current position and um, I, I think I need to respect that. I remind you that I'm not yet the chair of the ABC. As a consumer, I put the question to you anyway. Let's, let's move on. It's something linked, but it's an issue I think many journalists grapple with, and that is social media. How much do you think journalists within the ABC, outside the ABC, should be free to have a social media presence? And how much does that, do you think, put them at risk of public attack from people who, as, as you've highlighted, bias is often in the eyes of the the, the, the holder. Look, I, I, I think the, the line between individual opinion and advocacy and the professional responsibility as a working member of, a, of, a, of an institution which is a creature of the parliament and is accountable at law under the act of that parliament is a very, very complex question or a very simple one. Um, personally, I think there is a tendency in a lot of modern exchange for people to empower their personal opinion at the expense of the institutional responsibility to the public to adopt an independent stance which reflects professional integrity. And I, I, I think it's a, a very, very delicate transgression when one moves from one's institutional responsibility, um, one's legislative responsibility as, a, as a, all members of the ABC workforce are respondents under the ABC Act. Um, it's a delicate matter when you choose to set that aside and express your own opinion as being of maximum, um, at times triumphant, um, purpose. I'm not sure that's a wise thing to do. 
There are many, many writings in contemporary literature about these editorial questions. The most recent is Marty Barron's excellent book, Collisions of Power, um, Trump, Bezos and the Washington Post. Um, Marty is the former um, edit executive editor of the Washington Post. Before that, he was the executive editor of the Boston Globe and ran all of the investigations into the, um, the transgressions by the Catholic Church in Boston. Um, and before that was with the Miami Herald as executive editor. Very great editor. Um, and someone I've had the privilege to talk to on, on a number of occasions. Um, he deals with the issue of social media in a way that I think is reflective of best practice in managing a complex moving world where diversity is properly being given the status that it deserves, um, where there are a number of changing modalities in delivering information and where media organisations need to really do a reset in the way they think about these matters and create protocols that are fit for purpose um, and that are respectful and that engage with these issues in a way which is sophisticated um, and reflective of the very, very deep changes that are taking place in social communication and media delivery. Last time you were employed by the ABC, early 90s, I won't give too much away, that was my play school era. A lot has changed with the organisation since then. It has grown in terms of its output and its footprint. Where do you see the ABC, I know you haven't started the job, but in five years time when your appointment comes to an end, What's your vision for the institution? I, I think the, the role at the ABC is always the same in that it must reflect contemporary relevance. It cannot bathe in a past memory. It can draw on past memories, but it must assure itself that its pathway is one which, which reflects the best in contemporary relevance. And by contemporary relevance, I mean in terms of the content that is, that is produced by the ABC, the way in which it is made available to, to the Australian community, um, the way in which it employs people, and the way in which it trains people and sustains um, true North standards. Contemporary relevance, I guess, is one way of describing it. I guess at the more extreme end of the spectrum, people would say, is it a case of adapt or, or die? Well, you must adapt or die. Um, it is, many people would, would, I mean, many of our critics speak about um, the engagement with digital media as being beyond the remit of the ABC. The fact that digital media is fully encompassed in the Act and, and, and fully comprehended uh, in terms of amendments that have been made, which have been made to the Act is cast aside as being in some way an irrelevant consideration. Um, you know, it's an old adage that if you want everything to stay the same, everything around you has to change to accommodate that position. Um, that's clearly foolhardy. Um, the ABC must adapt or die. Kim Williams, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations again on your appointment and we hope to see you frequently during your term as, uh, as chair of the ABC. You can count on seeing me regularly. Thanks, Matt.